top team in the world, you need to be able to play a diverse set of, of comps, right? You can't just always play carry mid laners. You need to be able to play supportive mid laners. You need to be able to play supportive tops. You need to be able to carry from every lane, and that's something that TSM is trying to work towards. Absolutely. We see the Karma even flexing back in there a little bit more for him as of late, even though we see a lot of that engaged support coming back. Starting picks and bans out, Ivern LeBlanc from CLG. TSM look at the little of the junglers. Say, hey, Dardak, here you go. Hey, a lot of focus on the jungle so far. You know, three out of the four bans, and uh, jungle definitely, especially Zach. You know, Ivor and at least this triumvirate has gotten a lot of attention. Zach has almost always picked her band, and and at least has kind of risen to the top of, of ones that were getting through picker band. But anytime a champion is consistently getting first pick, it does sometimes start to go the way of the band. And now the question is going to be: Is Kennen left <laughs> up? And Kennen is not. So will Darshan actually first pick this up? Because that is another champion that has been getting grabbed left and right. A lot of control coming from that top lane. We've also seen it flexed by a few teams here as it's going back to the AD carry now in the NALCS. 11 seconds left as the Aurelian Soul is paid respect. It, it has come down to one of those champions you just can't let him have. But Lee Sin for Dardoch to start things off in this game. That's the thing with CLG though, is they actually do have very deep champion pools. And so it's easy to say you have to ban Aurelian Soul, but then you know people were questioning why was CLG allowed to play Zaya and Rakan? Why were they allowed to play this? Why are they allowed to play that? Yeah. But there's a lot of big picks for these players, and a lot of these guys are, are really strong on a lot of different champions, so it's it's very tough to actually ban them out. There's the Galio Cobb once again. You definitely have a strong lane wherever he goes. It feels good to have that in the first place, and then you get Galio for the fights in the late game. We see what Hauntzer, or I'm sorry, Svenskaren now hovers and will pick up for the team as a second. And normally, you know, you wouldn't really expect Warwick as a hover to be a, a real pick, but it, it certainly is possible to see it in the matchup against Lee Sin. I think it's actually yeah. very favorable. Uh, Xerxes has played it in the EU LCS. He, he believes it's kind of a counter to Kha'Zix. And, and this is another matchup that I think that can be quite favorable for the Warwick. It's very hard for Lee Sin to actually duel up against uh, that champion. Caitlyn's picked up. Saw that ban just about every game here in the arena for game one. So not gonna be not gonna be Zaya and Rakan combo. Obviously Rakan could still come through, and there are, are a lot of playmakers available um, for Afro Moon. Going up against a Caitlyn with support picks still available is a little bit scary though, um, because you certainly can draft a powerful laning support like the Karma or the Nami or something like that, and really have a bully two v two lane here for double lift and Biofrost. If you're a blind pick, also pretty brave because Kennen is still available. You know Jace is still available can struggle uh, in some of these early matchups. Yeah, it's good instantly. There it is. Because they don't want it banned once they get into that ban yeah. phase. So this, there you this go. is pretty interesting from CLG. Uh, you know, blind picking Fiora like that does deny TSM kind of the ability to, to get their early support and really, really strong bot lane perhaps. But it does give Hauntzer an advantageous matchup in that 1v1, at least early. That being said, if Fiora can get ahead of Kennen, because of the massive amount of mobility you have and the speed ups you get from proc and vitals, you can certainly run down and outscale uh, that Kennen as you yeah. get later into the it game. It becomes tough. It feels so good if you're ever kind of even or ahead as Kennen, but the moment you fall behind, everybody can just yeah. do whatever they want to that lane. Very, very tough. Teleports in mid and top. For TSM here, obviously that can change as the bands now come out. They may change up their composition, but right now with the Galio, I can't see more, or I can't not see more globals coming in on that side. Yeah, we'll see if, if TSM is going to draft the delivery system here in the form of you know their jungle or support, someone who can really be a way in uh, for the Galio, or if it's going to be more using that ultimate mm -hmm. for a defensive measure. Uh, obviously, you can use a lightning rush to kind of go in with the cannon, try to flank out, and then have Galio ult in there. But it's not the most consistent of delivery. Uh, methods. Support life getting knocked out of this one. Yeah. There's three quick bans towards it. Olaf as well for Svenskaren, so they don't have anything to charge in with as of yet with that Galio. Yeah, the Olaf Galio combo very powerful because you can simply pop your Ghost, pop the Ragnarok, run right in there uh, and be supported by that Galio. Uh, Kha'Zix is someone who can deliver him quite well here too. Uh, Jarvan Jungle, though it's it's not something that we've seen a lot of. That can be a very powerful yeah. combo. Gragas, there's a lot of options still up for TSM if they want to have something uh, to get them in. But drafting Lulu now, that's a lot of protection for Doublelift on this Caitlyn in combination with the, the damage reduction and the peeling that Galio is going to offer. It uh, could be pretty hard to get to Doublelift. 
Looks like they want to grab somebody out. Maybe... There we go, Blitzcrank. The Talia can go on that side of TSM. The wall following that can happen up here. And the Orion is still up for grabs, but if you have that Blitz, you can yank Bjergsen off the wall. You can do quite a bit mm -hmm. if you have that hook. Certainly can, and in this straight up 2v2, while Lulu can poke you out, this is a relatively squishy champion. If you're getting hooked yeah. in by Blitzcrank, you are going to be in so much trouble, especially in combination with a powerful early game jungler like Lee Sin. Uh, so this is definitely something that's uh, very, Whoa. very strong and drafting that, that Gragas. So that's going to be a... I'm actually super confused. So is this a Gragas There is Blitz Gragas. Gragas mid, I guess, unless that's a mispick. Uh, it's it's going to be Huhi on Gragas mid, I'm assuming. Fiora top. Yeah. Fiora top. Uh, and Blitzcrank support. I have not seen Gragas mid in so ridiculously long, but I, I mean, when you're thinking through the thought process here, you think about Gragas as far as matching up in the top lane with Galio, that can work pretty well. So why couldn't Gragas just match up in the mid lane? You go exactly. triple Doran's ring, you match that, you can itemize very easily into a, a Spirit Visage. Um, you could even lane swap the Fiora to match the Galio mid lane if you wanted to do that because that is an advantageous matchup. So definitely some crazy things going on here for one, CLG. One thing we used to see a lot in the, I say the old days, just a, a little bit ago in seasons, was you would get that AP and AD matchup in your solo lanes. Yeah. Then you try to get a single advantage. They've built mitigation towards AD or AP. You swap and they have no mitigation against that laner. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, I'm expecting uh, Huhi to be playing, <laughs> oh, man. playing the Gragas. And it, to be Darshan with that Fiora because he is very experienced on the Fiora in this split push. Uh, they haven't swapped yet though. And I mean, either way, whoever ends up with the champions, they could swap lanes to match oh, of course. their opponents. It doesn't matter to try where they to get go. that uh, that advantageous matchup. Awesome. This I is crazy. Nah, wait. We're gonna spice up the rivalry in the beginning here. And it's CLG <laughs> versus TS. Six has been stood up. He's been Six stood up by like Parth. Ready. Parth. Parth is like. So we see these picks. This is what you guys need to do here. Parth making his way over. <laughs> a crisp and firm handshake as they head off into the back. The players now left to their own divides. As we get into this crazy compositional game, I cannot wait to see what happens. Counter-Logic Gaming feels like the upper hand, they have the upper hand with what I would say Dardock has said. Speaking for the team, feeling like they're comfortable in this matchup and feeling like they can take down every lane of TSM. But TSM may have something else to say. We are on to the Rift. So this is pretty nuts. Like, Fiora in, into the Galio in top lane is very advantageous. I will say it is much harder for the Fiora to get that same sort of edge in the mid lane, simply because it's a much shorter lane. It's harder to actually freeze uh, the lane on your opponent and then kind of chase him down, put him in, right. in, a, in a difficult position. Uh, you're not as vulnerable in the mid lane. So while it, it will be good for Huey if they actually have like a straight up fight, he can certainly outscale and smash him in that 1v1. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how it's, how it's actually gonna look as far as the laning phase. I feel like it makes it hard for Huey, at least early to get the kills as well. You have a shorter lane, he'll be able to walk yeah. his vitals out of range really quick, and make sure he's safe in that instance. But it doesn't mean he can't harass the hell out of him back and forth. And it also doesn't mean that you can't have Huey just like split pushing against Hauntzer later in the game. Mm -hmm. If he's actually having, even if it just becomes a farm lane, right? If Bjergsen is pushing it in and Fiora is just farming at her turret safely, yeah. she can then, once she has not been bullied out in lane as she would be versus a cannon, go in the side lane and match in that 1v1 against Hauntzer. So that is like pretty interesting. And Fiora mid is something that I have, have not seen uh, really at all. Quite a few options. We'll see what CLG had in mind for this composition. As right now, they're just keeping vision on all members of TSM with a quite split vote. Wow. Changing a little bit in the favor of CLG there. Live. And everybody to lane. Looks like the supports will be able to do everything in the CS. No help for the junglers, as obviously they are in Raptors. But also, no real tag on any of the Raptors either. Usually Darshan will be there or somebody will be helping out. They had very safe starts this time. Definitely do. Galio is one of the best champions at actually leashing those Raptors. Uh, ridiculously strong leash with that Q. And who he? You know, he's not going to be fully, really kind of bullied out and, and pushed in uh, until Bjergsen gets some levels, until he picks up you know multiple Doran's rings. That's when you have enough AP and you have enough points in your Q to really uh, one-shot the back line. And that's when Galio can start to really take over lanes as far as the push advantage. Yeah. First back and then just being able to crush everything. Kuhi, once he gets his team out, will be all right. Deciding on his build and lane to be able to push it off the turret. But even Bjergsen's not pushing up too much, keeping the waves even and making sure it'll reset for himself so they're not caught off guard. 
And the question of that build is also pretty interesting. You know, does he go straight for a Tiamat and, and try to get that wave clear? Is he picking up an early vamp after to try to you know, sustain through harass? Yeah. And what is his most likely choice because it all depends on how he actually wants to play the lane. Does he want to try to match the push? Does he want to try to go for something else? And Dardock sneaking bot side with the blitz. He could look for a flash grab and will not be Ooh. spotted walking into this bush here. Uh, so he is up there and Aphromoo is going to look for Biofrost. Oh, flash for flash. Actually for double lift. It's almost like a no look hook. Biofrost almost felt like he was the target as you were saying. Yeah, it might have been the, the easier one to go for, but either way, it's still generally considered a good trade. You traded your support flash for the AD's yeah. flash. Nice reaction from Doublelift, though, because if he had gotten hooked there with the Lee Sin, it almost guaranteed would have been first blood. That double summoners, the exhaust as well, and first blood. But that's the pressure. They already had a good amount on the lane. Usually you see using the hook relieves that pressure, but CLG was set up to keep it going and push TSM in. Sven's Garen now towards the top side, a little healthier, but not by Hoogie. And one thing that we didn't talk a lot about uh, because so excited by this Fiora <laughs> is the Gragas versus uh, Kennen matchup right. as we're going to see this one more time, looking for that flash hook, but double really quick reactions to be able to uh, responsibly flash that. Just barely didn't get him, but Gragas is going to be bullied very hard by Haunter. Uh, especially in the early levels, you know, he's going to try to get a couple doors to be able to push that back out and kind of sustain in the lane. But uh, TSM certainly going to be looking for a top lane advantage. Yep. And if Sven's Aaron can get up there and, and get him even a kill, that could start to snowball uh, pretty heavily. And we know about those few basic fundamentals of how Dashaun plays the game. You know, he thinks it's a privilege to be able to get each one of those CS. <laughs> <laughs> It's a privilege to get each one of those CS, especially in a 2v1. But he also just said he's not afraid if this matchup goes awry versus Haunter. If he's countered in it, it's okay. Yeah. The team is there, and that's what they're playing is the team game. And Darshan has, has always been one of the guys that, even on split pushers, I feel uh, prioritizes the team play, often over himself, sometimes yeah. to the detriment of himself. Yeah. You know, he's, that can be. he's really strong on a Fiora, but he'll be the guy who TPs to the fight to try to help out his team instead of trying to get the solo advantage and always willing to make that team play style, which a lot of people really kind of started to recognize, you know, at, at MSI last year, uh, where yep. he was kind of famously losing most of his lanes, but making these great TP plays on Poppy and, and Nautilus and champions like this, uh, which would give them an edge elsewhere. A little bit of harass back from Haunter, just about 10 CS down in that lane. There's not much action here from Fence the here. mid, but now it's about to be a party. Three's a crowd, and Dardock also joins the damage here, I believe, to come from the side of CLG to start things off. Bjergsen has a bit more utility in that early kit, and they back off. Not really a lead to anybody, but they have an idea where the junglers are, and Stardot can go in. Not a massive lead, but Doublelift might get hooked here. He's got to try to juke it out. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh. Stood still! Uh, that's the challenger juke. It only works against really good players. <laughs> We're gonna... It's the no juke juke out! Oh man, uh, that's that's pretty good. But Svenskeren did uh, have to flash away from that mid lane engage, so they did get a little bit of an edge there. Nothing massive, but uh, another summoner down uh, for CLG. Right, here's that TM map for mid lane now. Who he will be able to push right on back towards Bjergsen, mm -hmm. and the teleport actually might just be a walk in here for Bjerg, so they could have an upper hand on map control as it comes to it here around six minutes in the game. And that's one of the advantages that you do have as a pushing champion. You can shove out that lane then base. So Bjergsen will actually not miss uh, much at all when he gets back. You know, maybe you lose, okay, he's gonna miss one melee minion for not using his TP, whereas his opponent would have missed essentially a full wave had he not TP'd back. Yep. Uh, so Bjergsen is gonna come ahead with that teleport advantage and uh, the team's gonna have to respect the fact that he could TP in an heroic entrance from so far away. For the 90 caliber net combo from Double Lift. We'll see how they played this wave with the back. It looks like Glitter Lance through, so they'll seem to get a push and keep CLG here. Yeah, that delay on the base means that CLG can't actually afford to really go back. It looks like Dex they can't because he would lose so much now as the wave is uh, being pushed heavily in. Uh, so this base timer is definitely getting delayed, and TSM will be stronger on the bot side right now with the uh, BF Sword pickup here from Double Lift. So we'll see if they want to try to make any plays around this. You know, you could even look to pick up an early dragon, as that bot lane is going to have to base before they yeah. can fight for CLG. It's more gold. Grab a scuttle. We'll be able to get vision for the team on the bot side. Sven Skarin can still hover top and know what's going on down there around his blue buff. And a quick ping, a very nice ping actually going over from Sven Skarin. They have the timing on the red and they just said, Dardock's probably around here. 
so be careful if you are roaming. It looks like Biofrost is going to try and confirm that. Biofrost trying to get some deep vision here for the team. Keep Ooh. that bot lane safe. As just missed it. Doesn't spot him, but he knows now that where he just was because that, that red buff would have respawned that and it has true. been cleared out. So you can say, okay, he was bot side. He's not at the Krugs. He's very likely clearing up towards the top side of the map or looking around middle. And you were right. This this is extended that opposite back of Sticks and Alpha Room now into this dragon. Yeah, that's these these little things making a really big difference. And a Dardoch, we'll see if he looks for it. No, not gonna be able to. But that's off of the base timings, right? That's off of yeah. the advantage that a TSM's bot lane had accrued. They stopped Six Day and Double, or sorry, Six Day and Afro from being able to base. And then when they do, they know they can go for a free dragon. Leaders up to CS as well. Mm -hmm. Now Bjergsen even more wave clear for his mid lane. You have to see that ultimate go anywhere else just yet. 73 to 70, everything's pretty even. Haunts are, however, on to Darshan, 77 to 52, and we'd expect it to play out that way. We saw Impact have a really hard game on Gragas. C9 were able to still come up with the win, so it's all about weathering the storm up there in that counter matchup. And the nice thing for, for Darshan is there, he's not going to have to stay up there forever in an isolated 1v1, yeah. because eventually who he, you know, you would think would be able to get strong enough that he can go to the side lane and match. We can put that Fiora there. So you yeah. kind of skip the part where Fiora is getting bullied, have her scale up for free against the Galio, then you put him against that cannon at a point where maybe the Fiora can match him and can take him out. We are still waiting for that composition to kind of come online. And it'll be quite some time, right? Absolutely. Fiora needs a couple items. There's a bit of a chase. This could help get to an item. Justice punched his safety, and he's going to soar to the top lane. Darshan will call that out. This is just for the exit on the side of CLG. Nice little roam there, though, from the CLG squad. They push Bjergsen out of that mid lane, so they can shove that up. Uh, Stix A needs to play a little bit safe, obviously, on the bot side, because his support is roaming. But Kha'Zix is coming down, and they may look to try to punish this, see if they can pull off a dive. Aphromoo is on the way, and I don't think they're going to go for it as the wave is clear. Yep. Just starts to back off the turret, giving Stix A a bit of breathing room. Darshan to back, and he has enough time here to walk back the lane as well, so a lot of teleports coming up. Who he's just in a bit. Darshan also has TP, and there's a great TP ward. He's going for it behind the TSM bot lane. That ward has been there for a while. CLG made to get this, made sure to get that in place for a play down the line, and this is going to be the one locked up and taken down as double lift. Darshan, before the kill ended, trying to already head towards Biofrost, but the Glitter, Glitter Lance may just save his life. Looking to ult him back with the cask. Does not have it, though. Trying to keep him in range for Dardock here. Over the wall, Sonic Wave. He's just going to flash it as well. Quite a bit of resources used here for the kill, but they're buying time for the lane to be pushed up by Stick Say to keep these guys out of clearing the wave and to try and get some pressure on that bot lane turret. They do get the two kills. And now they can go four-man bot, pick up this first turret because they're in a race against Haunts or Top, but it's just the one man. Right. So CLG should be able to pick this up faster with much higher damage there. And uh, Sven's trying to get up to help the Ponser take it down, but CLG should win the race. A bit of the speed, and that play works a lot better because Bjergsen could not alt to the bot lane. Just used it top, and CLG could chase. Yeah, that's a great call. I mean, it, it's it's the extended play, as you're pointing out. It's forcing out summoners, then forcing out that ultimate yeah. from Bjergsen, knowing Bjergsen has no TP, knowing Ponser has no TP. Yeah, and then they're able to set up the ward and make this happen, and it's a great play. Uh, not expending too, too much here on double lift. Darshan thinks that they can get that second kill, so gonna go straight over and they get the eventual chase down for a second kill. That's two summoners up now on the side of double lift. So 80, you should say bot, 80 carries have their summoners, supports waiting for a few to come back up after that fight. You may see a repeat bot lane as Bjergsen's ult is very close, but with the turrets down, the repeat bot lane because his lane to push mm -hmm. uh, as we change that up. And Biofrost is going to have to be pretty safe because this is a summonerless Lulu against a Blitzcrank who has Flash, right? So if, if you get hooked in there, uh, you're definitely going to go down. He's looking. Locks him up. You just... Caster cars. What was that? You have a crystal ball or something? <laughs> Man. I mean, it, it's the right play to go for, right? It is. It's, you take advantage of the summoner spells as often as you can. You force a play bot, you know Lulu has no summoners, your Blitz does. Yeah. That's a play that Aphromoo should go for. So all credit to him for recognizing it, for timing the summoners, and knowing he can make that play. Early game movements by CLG from lane to lane. A Rift Herald getting a little bit of love, but Dardox has, I believe, pulled off of that. No, he's just pulled it out of the pit a little bit. Now it's going to be the 2v2 as Svenskeren and Bjergsen to make themselves apparent in this fight. 
the heel by Stick Say. Oh, this could be a grab here. Haunter's not gonna have fun. Flashes out himself. That's a, a bit of Ken initiation or safety if he wants to get in or out of a fight. Who he's gonna be going down here if Har Dardock cannot get to him. Oh, wow, TSM actually backs off as well. A lot of little fights with no result just yet, but it's TSM gaining ground off of losing that bottom fight. And a couple summoners traded. Who he having to flash out there? A heel having to be used by Stixay and Haunter yeah. and Sven both blew their flashes as well. Really close fight. No one ends up coming up with the Rift Herald though, which would have been the, the big win there. Yep. Seeing what kind of items and bikes we have around. Like just recipes right now. Almost finished up for an Infinity Edge here over on Double Lift. He's sitting at about a thousand gold, so he's got a ways to go. Already has that cloak money if he wants it. He's gonna go back. Ward's being placed up and cleared out right now by Biofrost. And it looks like Stixay's happy to stay with Aphromoo in mid lane. Just keep getting this pushed and farm up Stixay. Now going for that blue invade. They see some of the base timings of TSM. Ooh. Think they have the advantage. And Hansa, remember, he has no flash. Uh, from that earlier mid play. Tries to get a few attacks on. The Mark of the Storm is going to allow him to lock down Darshan fast, but Dardock's going to be able to get right out of it as well. They're going for the kill. What does the rest of the team get? Yerson tries to come in on this one. The chase from Lulu possibly speeding up the team would have been enough, but it is not. Yeah, just not able to get range fast enough for that damage to matter. And now they could look to try to contest around the blue buff. Would be a little bit risky, though, as Dardock is low. And Huyi has gone up the side lane. He's pushing top with no answer there just yet. <laughs> I almost said Darshan top lane, but you're right. It is Huyi <laughs> on that mid lane Fiora in the top. Teleports up. You better rim. As we were saying. So he can get to any fight that he really wants. Dardock going for Dragon pulls the interest of Svenskaren there as well. And who he a little hesitant about the turret without seeing the rest of the team, but now they have eyes on TSM. It should be the turret. You've really got to feel like the fact that CLG got through the laning phase with this mid lane Fiora, got him to a side lane at a strong point, is such a big win for the team. And oh, <laughs> if Blitzcrank stole that, that would have been great. But uh, you know he's going to be very powerful now in that side lane uh, because he's. At a, at a pretty strong point, he's going to have his Black Cleaver completed very soon. He already has uh, that TM add, and, and it's going to be tough for Haunter to really match up well against him in a long lane. This is actually pretty impressive well of how who he will play the Vitals, how in, in general he's going to play the Fiora being a mid lane player. We do say his champion pool is pretty deep, and these guys don't just go into queue and play their only lane. So seeing him on what is this top laner will be quite interesting as we get into the pretty nitty gritty fights. Yeah, it really is. And, and I think the real challenge of Fiora is if you have to go into the team fighting stage, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of good players can play her in that 1v1. But when you're in a team fight, you need to recognize exactly when to use your parry. If you do not parry the right CC or the right burst yeah. onto you, you go down so fast because you are very squishy. It's about utilizing the parry perfectly and being able to heal up a lot from the vitals. So. If he has the 5v5, that's going to be the true test of his Fiora skill. Just to grab over the... Whoa! Oh. Oh, that's scary. It was baiting it. It's got to feel good knowing he played that one correctly. Dardock with the hit. A little too deep, but he does have Dar... Or he does have Darshan, rather. He's coming in. Dial Fiora. Cross. Solo the kick through! Oh, he misses the Sonic Wave! That follow-up might have put him a little too deep. Afromu wanted it, too. They're on his fence here now, but the first one to go down is Afromu. A great 1v1 between Stixay and Double It brings Double It very low, as him and Biofrost have about 600 HP. The resulting fight gives De uh, Bjergsen a kill. Now on to the rest of the team of CLG. Will they find one to Hauser? Oh, this the is heel, he into the Fiora. fight. He's going in with the double kill. A possible triple, but the Winds of War pushes him out from Bjergsen. And Dardok is going to get out with the team as they call the disengage too close to the turret. A three for one. Yeah, that's a big, that, that three for two, I think, in the long three, two, right, you're Very right. close you're right. fight. It looked like it was going heavily TSM's way, but Fiora, with that true damage and that ultimate, able to heal up, get the kill and really swing things around. <laughs> Pretty insane a uh, fight here. And, and Dardok, he sees the opportunity. They're looking for the play as Darshan's coming in. It's a really nice body slam flash. The ultimate doesn't really knock them back fully into the team, unfortunately. And then that miss Q uh, from Dardok means Biofrost is able to survive there uh, for much, much longer and eventually get out. Six is winning the duel on the bot side here. Uh, and it looks like at this point, it's probably going to go TSM's way, but who he still has the ultimate, and with Haunter going into melee range on the Fiora, they're able to get enough Ooh. damage out with the ultimate, proc that heal, and stay alive. Grand challenge was issued and taken. As who he comes into his first fight, we are questioning it, and he chose his targets accordingly with the help of his team here. 
Teleports are down mostly across the map with Darshan's being up. We'll see how they play that. Uhi's actually going to be the one in the top. Darshan to the bottom and back to an old CLG 1-3-1. One, one. The other kind of cool thing about having this, this physical damage duelist against Bjergsen in the mid lane is mm -hmm. you know, he had to build uh, the armor, and, and Galio loves to build MR because you're getting extra out of that with right. his kit and not really able to itemize easily into that. Uh, you're always going to be under more threat from someone like a Fiora as a Kalio than you are from like a Syndra or really anything like that because you can itemize very easily into a Vistal Mask and items like this uh, to not only do quite a bit of damage, but to be almost unkilled. They are just denying the jungle of TSM right now. Red buff pull over, Raptor steal with a smite, and already they're able to get in and clear a pink ward, clear wards that TSM just put down. It makes it very hard to keep your vision up anywhere other than next to your turrets, which is where you already have vision. 7 to 2 here, coming up on 20 minutes into the game. Dardoch 3, 0, and 2 out of that jungle in this Huhi mid, 2, 0, and 0. And the top side for CLG has been getting all those kills, uh, doing very well. And, yep. and Bot is, even if, if not you know, a little bit ahead here for Stix A2, up a, a little bit of CS, has some assists to his name. So the whole comp is working very well. Um, that said, I think in a, in a late game 5v5, it's going to be tough uh, for CLG because it's hard to hook someone effective uh, for Aphromoo when you have this giant Galio who's going to be the super tank in front of you. You have the Lulu plus the Caitlyn combo. So it's very strong team fight. But CLG is going to look to try to not give them that. They're going to try to spread out the map with Fiora, look for picks with the Blitz and the Gragas, and, and really kind of play a much more scrappy game. Here we go. Good guy some portal combat. <laughs> starting, starting up the Rift Herald by himself. There we go. The damage from Dardock and Stix A. So this now puts CLG even more in the driver's seat with an option of where to use the Rift Herald. Smart, smart little play here on the bot side from Darshan. Uh, knowing that his, his team is actually doing Rift right now, he's vulnerable bot. So he actually used his ult to clear out the mini wave from far away, uh, knowing that he could potentially be yeah. dove on that last wave. So we'll see if he sticks around here now or continues to respect that threat uh, because he's definitely on the weak side of the map right now. It, it all it comes from the count of members, right? They say, yeah, we have two here. We can't see Lulu, we can't see Caitlyn. They just appeared in mid. It doesn't matter at this point. He still played it safe. Kept himself alive. Oh, Aaron Rush. Aaron Rush. Now 20 minutes in it just to spawn. We saw this go very bad for Echo Fox last game. Bjergsen's going to have an idea. It's yeah, happening. He here. went over the wall. Winds of War are going to damage the team, but they don't have a way to smite this one now. Since Garen's too far away, it's CLG's Baron at 20 minutes in, and Bjergsen wants the resulting fight. It's going to be Sense Garen over the wall if they do take it or just Void Spikes to slow the team down. TSM says mid. CLG's going to back. That was beautiful from CLG. They take the Rift and they get the Baron right off the bat, right after that. So they have the Rift Herald available to push a side lane with the Baron buff here on all five. They didn't lose anyone for that. Such good shot calling. The Rotatos coming in here for CLG. The bot lane being held by Darshan, considering where the rest of TSM was, even without the vision. They just saw Double Lift and Biofrost. Before that, Biofrost was hidden in the jungle. So a quick, fast call by CLG. We'll see how they use this in the lanes. I would love to see Aphromu go top, drop the Rift, have a three-man squad, then join up with him, pushing mid, and Fiora splitting bot. That creates so much pressure in all three lanes with this Rift Herald, but they also have the option of just dropping it straight mid, and it looks like that's what they're going to do for now, is they're going to try to crack that mid-tier two while Fiora is pushing bot. Quite healthy as well here, so it's going to do a good chunk of damage. Let's see how much clear they can get on the turret. Oh. TSM immediately focusing that Rift Herald before the minion wave gets in. These are barreled up minions, so it'll be even tougher. It will be tougher, and remember, Huhi's on that bottom turret already. So they have already taken wow. down one. They're working on the second. And as this next Baron minion wave comes in mid, they should be able to finish off that mid turret. That's going to be three very quick turrets here uh, for CLG, very likely. But TSM wants to fight. Flash in from Bjerg. That's the airborne onto Stixay. He gets himself in a great spot. The chain of corruption goes out. TSM has so much ground to cover now before they can enter the fight with Bjergsen. Huhi's back on the line. And CLG go back in to take down Bjerg. Haunter get the stun bot in. The damage onto Darshan now, and they can't Ooh, lock him still down. Has all remember. Slivers of health is CLG's who he decides to go back in. Aframu looking for a pick just over the cupcakes, and he's going to miss as they get the flash out of double lift. And the turret still stands after the fight. Remember the work done in the bot lane, though, by who he during this, and he came mid. 
And Bjergsen does go down, but TSM holds on to their mid-tier 2 at very low health, and now CLG will have to go collect the side lane waves, reset a little bit. They just do have uh, a little bit of time on this Baron buff, uh, about 30-40% of that remaining, so they can still come back and try to take out this turret, but TSM, it knows they're bleeding objectives, and they don't want to give up too much. So the engage, really nice from Bjergsen, but Doublelift isn't really there to do damage to 6A, so he's not under much threat. Hauntzer is coming in a little bit late, so they didn't really have the damage or the follow-up uh, for that initiation from right. Bjergsen. And in the extended play, you know, once their tank is down, a CLG you know, is hiding it out, playing it pretty safe. It looks like they could perhaps go for a turnaround, but look how fast Hui goes down as he goes in. The wave going on in here. <laughs> awesome. I love it. CLG, we see these these kills walk away with such <laughs> little HP because of this level advantage. A level advantage oh, for Hookie. Dardoch, Dardoch again stealing red, staying under the skin of TSM. But 14 to 13 on Hauntzer. Dardoch's a level over Sven Skarin, and that's the result. That's what you see these guys walking away with 100 HP in these fights, not being able to kill them. The whole team has just really been contributing for CLG. And, and for TSM, it's just going to be about playing safe, trying not to bleed out too much here, and, and looking for that eventual really strong 5v5 type team fight. Because, you know, as strong as Fiora gets, if, if she gets taunted up in a team fight and you can burst her down, yep. there's certainly a way to turn around that fight. And, and the 5v5 will be really strong for them. But CLG is doing a good job of extending the gold lead and really pressuring side lanes, making TSM split up. Bot lane is going to be gigantic soon here for Counter Logic Gaming as it's going to build up one more wave, about two and a half to be crashing into that bot turret. And if you look at all the vision that CLG has on this side of the map, like it's pretty incredible. TSM mm -hmm. really has a very little uh, as, as far as vision into their side of the jungle. Oh, oh out of the air, Alley Oop yanked oh, back. Bjergsen doesn't have a chance to think about it. Blast cones himself to safety as Bjergsen was looking to really add the resistances there to get his teammate out. That was a great combo from Darkon and Afterboo. The alt right into the hook and. No chance for Sven, even with the early Lulu ultimate. CLG is pressuring so hard here, and as you called out, that massive bot lane wave is yeah, building. here it comes. 9 to 2, 25 minutes in. You can see the bot lane wave as they get Bjergsen. Scary pull. We've seen a kick into the taunt be very bad for a team. But here they're able to stave off the follow-up damage here from TSM. The wave's pretty far away, so they're kind of just hanging out in no man's land right now. And TSM. We're going to be able to hold on there, pick up this yeah. wave bot side. And they have so much wave clear with the Galio and the Caitlyn. So, you know, Kha'Zix as well with that Evolve W, also pretty good at that wave clear. So unless you have a Baron buff, it is very hard to just directly siege on them through Caitlyn traps and all this wave clear. Uh, so TSM should be pretty comfortable holding their base. But the problem is if you play too far back, you give up your jungle. You give up the global objectives yep. like the Baron and these dragons. And, and that can mean you just get put way too far behind. Their pink wards are close. Sightstone wards a little farther out, hoping to not be cleared here. And you can see the buddy system by TSM as they do go to even clear. The two members that are doing it in Kha'Zix and Biofro or Kha'Zix and Lulu for Svenskeren and Biofrost definitely able to get themselves out of scary situations. But they have to do it fast. CLG is on the move, and they are ready to keep putting down the damage from their advantages on each lane. This Fiora is, is getting you know, very close to that super, super crazy late game status, right? This is a double buffed up Fiora, already on two items, working very likely towards what is a, a death stance, I would assume. Yeah. And generally speaking, when you have CDR and you have double lifesteal items, that's when you can just start to dive people because you heal so ridiculously much from all the built-in lifesteal, plus the vitals and the ultimate, that you can straight up kill people under their turrets. And that three item power spike is something that TSM is going to have to be very, very scared of. And the situation of the split push transfers over for who he anyways. This guy is mm -hmm. a boss casted in when he gets the split push. He knows how to play that back and forth and really make it trouble for Hanser to not be able to even get anything. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, he has a lot of picks that he's going to be comfortable split pushing on. Echo's another one. Yep. You know, Aurelian Soul, while it's not a split push pick, it's someone who has to move around the map uh, very well. But TSM looking to perhaps set up a trap here uh, for, Dar or for Darshan. They see him up there. Will they go for the play? With one hit from Svensk Garen, it's going to be pressure for Kuhi again to work the bottom lane. 
And this will be something they may be able to hit. Baron's up in one second with who he's teleport there, so they can be safe about this. Haunter, flash out. There's also a flash from Stixay to try and get the Chain of Corruption in there, though. Yeah, trade of flashes. And, and remember, this is a low mobility AD carry, so he has to be pretty scared now. That would have been a big pick, but he is somewhat vulnerable. You know, if you can deliver the Kha'Zix and Galio right on top of him, yep. he may not have a way out, because it's not like he has this Lulu to peel for him. It's it's a blitz crank, right? It's, it's not that safety support. Everything is the jockey for Baron position now. Here's that fight to the bot lane, 2v1 situation. The flash from who he means that he has called quite a bit of resources down for no kill. Lightning rush to come up for Hanser as he tries to get in range for a Q. It's gonna be three procs of the storm. He actually goes for the autos first and is not able to get it after who he's Q. CLG looking at Baron as this fight oh, happens. Turn around. He gets to turn around the vitals against the wall. He's gonna be able to get the last attack in. And we question whether he can do the 1v1 in the fights. And there's the 1v1 after the fights from earlier in mid. Teleport now coming in from Bjergsen. The rest of the team is gonna be here. And now double lift is hit up. Darshan's on him immediately. There goes Dardock to the back of the fight. It puts Fence Garen in a very sticky situation. Bjergsen missing the Justice Punch, and now CLG ready to deliver more kills. Here comes another one in. No, that has stopped up. They don't decide to do it. They keep going for the fight to the top side. That is Biofrost going down. There's the kill onto Svenskeren. Bjergsen will also fall. The clean ace for CLG off of the insane outplay in the bot lane. The 1v2 for who he gets the kill on Haunter. Woo. Bjergsen's TPing out, he takes a lot of damage. Who he TPs in, cleans it up. They're gonna get Baron, they're gonna get five kills, and they are insanely ahead. CLG said they would have that momentum early. Dardock said he would have a better jungle than Svenskaren so far. Putting up the play to follow those words. 14 to two here with a huge lead. And the second Baron of the game as they come. One at 20 minutes, now one at 29. Let's see this bot lane again. Yeah, and as soon as Bjergsen is starting to recall here, who he just simply turns around and takes down that Ken and you get in range of him, you're gonna go down. And you can see the Fiora actually ends up chasing Bjergsen and getting a lot of damage in on him while he's TPing before he comes in. It was a nice hook on the pile cross, oh, getting a flash there. And then Darshan catches double lift, who's very split away from the rest of the team. And then a kick flash onto Spence Karen. Like the whole team is just playing individually very well here from CLG. And, and that is why these fights are going so, so well. Afro has hit so many hooks. And, uh, you can tell Dardock is pumped up. <laughs> Definitely pumped up coming into this game. Everybody with a smile on their face from Counter Logic Gaming. They reset a bit and they go back for more. And one of the scariest parts about that is, you know, CLG just won that fight. And then these guys were basing with thousands of gold. Darshan had almost 3,000 gold when he based. Who he had well over 2,000 gold when he based. And now they have completed all these items and they're massively stronger than they were in the fight where they just smashed TSM. So TSM really has to slow this down, really has to hold out. Because if your base gets cracked against this Fiora, it's, it's gonna be so tough. You could say survive. massively stronger and that's reflected in some levels. Who he level 18, Bjergsen and Doublelift 14. level 14. Not yeah. even the third level of the ultimate for them yet. This guy is crushing with all the solo farm he's had this game and using that advantage, something you really need to do on top of what your, whatever the team is giving you. And now CLG is just buffing up all three waves yep. with, with these Baron minions and they're looking to pressure. You know, you have to have a mismatch here because not one person can answer Huhi and that means that there's too many people bot side. So Darshan's gonna be up on the turret. It's just this push and pull. As people answer on one side, you attack the turret on the other and you just continue this back and forth. And there's always the threat of Aphromoo who has his flash available, looking for a flash hook on double lift or Biofrost who are both flashless. The split push becomes such a strenuous thing for TSM because now they almost have to make a move or they have to concede some of these turrets to squeeze CLG in a little bit further. Get them in a spot that would be good to engage in. A stun up on this to who he is in a bad spot here. Actually gonna get himself taken down. As he goes over the fight, he takes down Sven Skarin before he goes down. The heal from Grand Challenge keeps himself alive a little longer, but Darshan has not strayed from the top lane. He continues to go for the inhibitor. Not exactly the most punishing auto attacks there from Gragas, but he's <laughs> uh, doing his best job. Uh, and they're Hoop jolly. Trades them for the 1v1, so they're going to be able to continue to pressure, and that bot lane turret is almost down here as well. CLG are going to have the next wave coming in mid very soon. 
Uh, and they can look to try to push on that turret now. This, bl this Blitz pi uh, pick as well, especially on the base, nobody's safe. You're never safe around a turret with Blitz, but now you can walk up to the sidewall, get a nice pick behind the minion, so it makes these inhibitor turrets even harder to guard. Now the CLG is even more ahead. 33 minutes coming up on the clock, and 15 to 3 right now. CLG probably going to grab a few more kills if they're not held off here by TSM. They have been getting clean fights and clean two or three kills in the fights, which allows them to keep getting more. We'll see what happened here as they got a little ahead of themselves. And here's the play. TSM know that they can't allow themselves to be pulled apart, so they make a decisive call. They go for the kill, but the amount of damage coming out from Pookie there, Another thing to note is when Galio alts in, if you parry onto someone, it's a guaranteed stun on them because you can <laughs> time your parry so easily with the Galio alt, which is another one of the reasons Fiora matches up so well there. He's able to get that parry stun to look like over on his fan, pop the ultimate and clean him up. Too bad you can't do an absorb resistances. Yeah. <laughs> Back and forth, he's such a counter. Not much helps against the true damage. Yeah, exactly. So the Infernal now being picked up by Dardoch. The rest of the team was able to grab that. Two dragons to their name now with the Elder. TSM has quite a few to their name here in game one, so both could benefit quite a bit. It really could. Fight. And TSM has kind of taken back vision control of their red side jungle, so that's one of the next steps for CLG. If you can get vision all around the top side as CLG, you can allow Fiora to safely split push, but he doesn't know where they are right now. There's two people, you know, maybe even a third coming up with Biofrost. We'll see if they can catch him. Ooh, that's going to be the hits. Knock up from Bjergsen. Uh, actually, a teleport coming in from Darshan. They want this fight instead of having a free lane to the bot side. Darshan's very, very low. They're getting in a little late on this fight. Stixay has a long way to run here, and CLG has just taken a cross-map fight that could cost them the map control. Good damage from Dardock and the rest of the team to save off the rest of this, but it doesn't seem like they'll lose too much with the waves they have pushing in. Yeah, they, they shouldn't lose too, too much. Uh, CLG will be okay off that one yeah. pick, but it's it's like I was talking about. You need to get the vision before your split pusher goes up too far. Right. If you have the vision coverage, you know where the pieces are in place, and you know if he can take the fight or not. CLG now looking to catch some late recalls. We'll see if they can get anyone. Oh. The silence was there from Aphromoo, almost willing to use that very low cooldown. But they decide to peel off, and they wouldn't have anybody there to kill. Clear up here. Haunts are on the janitorial duty to the bot side. He is 333 CS to 253 of Darshan. And actually, just about even in gold, Darshan has 13.6. So does Haunter, being that far behind in kills and whatnot. He has been making it up in lane presence. Definitely has, but it's the Fiora he has to be oh, more gosh. worried about. <laughs> so Who scary. Insane scaling. And uh, so much of this is going to come down to, to the vision battles and being able to track that split pusher because if Huhi yep. can get the fights he wants, it's almost impossible to 1v1 him at this point. They need to send multiple members and take him out like that, and that's what buys TSM time. So they fight over vision. You know, Sven Skerin and Biofrost doing a good job here to try to set up those kind of plays mm -hmm. that they made. And Aphromoo and Dardoch are going to have to fight right back against that and try to create the vision control so that they can avoid those things. Darshan getting a solo push on mid. A little scary position for him, but it seems like the team calls him back. A lot of people were in base. That is not a time to be out by yourself. Everybody starts heading towards mid. Who he back to the bot side. That turret is going to go down quite fast if he can make it there. It's just how much of a back and forth CLG can play. Yeah, and there's only 30 seconds until the Baron is up. And remember, TSM still has so much strength in a straight up 5v5. Yeah. So they may have the ability to try to force around that objective and try to force CLG to take this straight up 5v5 that they don't want. You know, CLG is still trying to avoid those fights, find picks with the Blitz in the Lee and the Gragas, and split push out with the Fiora. So TSM needs to be decisive and pick their moments. It makes it even harder. GA now for Dardoch and Buhi. So if they do go down in the fight, you're going to be TSM's worried about course. one of these guys trying to start it back up. Just a kick on Sven Skarin. Dardoch really didn't have anywhere to go after that. Buhi looking to come back or keep splitting. The waves for TSM aren't really in position. If they do get a win, they're going to get Baron. So Buhi stays on the inhibitor turret, and CLG will try to stop the Baron as much as possible. Yeah, CLG just has to delay now because right. Fiora is in the base, taking down the inhibitor. There's a massive lane top. CLG doesn't want to fully commit to a fight. Sven Skarin very He's low so here. Low. If he goes down, they would lose their smite. He's the closest to Baron, too. Has to jump out. Takes another shot. He's one hit away. 100 HP. Airbone Gurs 
towards Bjergsen as he tries to get in for the taunt. Who he's in the base by himself. A Nexus turret goes down. He can easily finish the game here if CLG goes for broke and uses each bit of HP they have. Oh, he's looking for the 1v1 on Hauntzer. The team in. Hauntzer, almost all vitals proc, and that would be his life. Two more to go. Back to the Nexus turret for Huki now as the minions are just off the outside range. A few more shots. Nexus fountain, or the turret fountain's gonna kill him. He's gotta be careful. Kill going in now on up to everyone. Biofrost. CLG can make it into the base with the rest of the team. This is the GA we were talking about. It just makes things last so long. And Huki has bought time for the team as they bought time at Baron. Yeah, they don't get the Baron, they don't end the game, but they get two inhibitors. I don't know. And there's multiple people down here. It's 20 seconds, 15 seconds now until Sven is up. They're gonna try to end the game. Straight we'll pass. see if Hauntzer can actually hold on. Hauntzer get his last bit of energy back. He wants to try to make the play here, slicing Maelstrom. Three quarters oh, on cooldown. That's the hit in. Chain of Corruption's onto immediately. One last shot after the Blade of the Rune King. CLG with a beautiful early game PSM. Held it off, backs against the wall. It looks like the Nexus is going to go down though. Seven seconds, it has to happen now. They've got it. it. Kicked away by Dardock and the Nexus falls in favor of Counter Logic Gaming. What an insane game from CLG. That was ridiculous. Blitzcrank support, Fiora mid to counter the Bjergsen Gallio and to be able to answer in this split push against this cannon. This was really, really smart drafting from CLG and Woo. it pays off so, so well when you have great drafting and fantastic execution, you get a game like this. The pulled pork strat, you just pull them apart. You keep <laughs> pulling apart every which way. It was Huhi in a different lane. Huhi would then be in the fight when TSM thought they could mm -hmm. engage. Or it was Darshan on the Gragas somewhere else, still split pushing on the top side, even though we saw those auto attacks not doing much of the turrets. It was the pressure CLG never let go of. Exactly, and, and this was a full team effort for CLG. Uh, the whole team was contributing really yeah. uh, played so well, I think, to their win conditions. And you know, even in the individual skirmishes, a lot of nice outplays for them. Uh, TSM, I think, it had a comp that, that could have won, but they weren't able to actually stabilize. And they weren't mm -hmm. able to get to that kind of team fight stage where they have enough gold and they have the pieces in place to really have the fights they wanted. With the pressure as well, top lane, Haunter taking such control over that lane over mm -hmm. Darshan. It was almost storybook for Darshan to come in today and say, hey, it's okay if I lose that 1v1. It's not about that. It's about what happens for the team. And it seems like CLG's comms coming together much more here. And Dardock actually really going in, helping out Huhi and giving him enough of a little bit of pressure in the early game so he could leave that lane and be a side split. And it just felt like the Blitzcrank added so much pressure onto, onto this even, team. You even know. in missed hooks, they were still respecting the hook down. Exactly. And, and he forced so many summoners out You know, with this Blitzcrank. It's very hard for Lulu to play safely into yeah. that Blitzcrank, right? And, and drafting this kind of kill lane against someone who would naturally poke you out, you know, it showed a lot of confidence from the CLG bot lane and they were able to make it work. And we'll actually have a replay of that base race, how he was able to keep it in the base. The team was saying, we'll stave off the fight, but it was quick, right? TSM came up with a kill and you thought, well, this is it. This is where they, they can get it. Exactly, I mean, they get a catch, right? And this is the 5v4 initiation. They killed Sven off right off the bat, and they decide they want to go for Baron. But Sven Skarin is very low. Uh, you know, Fiora is already pushing the base. I think there are some kind of split calls here from TSM. They're not sure exactly what they should do. Do we finish the Baron? Do we, fi do we fight? Do we base? What are we doing here? You know, they're still on the Baron. Half the team is fighting while they're tanking it. Hauntzer is basing, so definitely not the, the perfect decisive calls you would hope for there. Yeah. And then in the later half of this fight, Stixie, who is quietly very, very strong, was really able to t take over. And he flashes forward, he kills off Sven, and then there was a duel going on here. But at the same time, Stixie takes down both Double Lift and Biofrost as well. Like the, the Caitlyn going down, and this is this is that little duel, the end of that there yeah. from Stixie. Uh, Hauntzer did actually play it very well to kind of kite out and you know use his turrets, use the Frozen Mallet to be able to kite down Huhi and, and take him out eventually, but there's not really much <laughs> he can do to defend when the rest of the team came in. And look how long it takes him to take him down as well, right? This is that side lane split pusher. Yep. I'm going to just fight you, Fiora. And he, she wasn't healing back up. She was just so far ahead, it took him that long to take Huhi down. Yeah, it took him forever. And then the game is able Crazy. to be finished. It looked like TSM could have actually held on, but Darshan had his ultimate come back up. Yep. You knock in the cannon. Had Hauntzer been able to just 
live a couple seconds more, you probably can 2v3 defend that, you, you would think. You know, Wisven Skarin and the res timers very quick on Bjergsen and Doublelift coming up after that. So this was really close uh, down to the wire on, on if Seals, you could have ended it. Love it. Another awesome game to keep the day going here. And now we're going to throw it over to the analysts to see what they make of that CLG win. Well, we make quite a bit out of it. Very interesting stuff right here. We got a Fiora mid. I was excited. Probably the most interesting draft we've seen so far this split. There's been a lot of flexing going on, and this is as much as you can do with both the Galio and Fiora flexing the mid. A totally different top lane matchup. And oh yeah, by the way, in case you you know thought it wasn't interesting enough, let's throw a, a Blitzcrank down the bot lane. Yeah, a lot of fun things right here. And even though Caitlyn can have some of the escape tools there, it didn't really matter so much. And so let's let's dive a little bit longer into what Fiora does because. Uh, any fighter matchup into Cannon in a lane is going to be really rough. He's going to be able to bully you out. You don't have the time to go for the damage. I mean, he's picked to lane against all these all these melee champions. But if you don't have to lane against a Cannon, you actually get gold income, and the 1v1 actually gets a lot better down the line, and Fiora can actually 1v1 that matchup. That's where it starts getting weird, because, yes, usually Cannon plays from a gold lead. This time around, Fiora's playing from, like, a global gold lead. Their farm was relatively even, but CLG was making a lot better plays, so the Fiora's ahead. But the big time that Fiora got the first solo kill onto Kennen, he, uh, who he was smart in baiting uh, Hanser to face check a brush, get him into melee range so he can fight him out because he had lost the initial trade. And then from then on, I thought some of Haunter's itemization was intelligent, going for the early uh, executioner's calling to cut down through some of that lifesteal because you saw the double lifesteal build coming through. Mm -hmm. So there was a big mix and match between the two individual parts. And then when you expand it to the whole team comp, you're left with a full physical damage team comp on the side of CLG, essentially, with right. what is Tank it? Tank is not a big magic damage. Yeah, with not very much range available to them. So it's, it becomes a very strange team comp where it felt like if Afro didn't hit a couple of those hooks in the early game and CLG really took control of this game, it obviously gets horribly outscaled. Yeah. And uh, they, they did execute on their kind of win conditions in terms of early game lead, split push Fiora, but that stuff starts getting very dicey for me. Right, so we can start talking about the you know how they're able to snowball in a little bit. I do want to point out one more thing, though, or I guess maybe even pose a question, which is, how many times do you think who he has actually played <laughs> in League of Legends at all a game of mid Fiora? I it's hard to say. I'm sure it's the kind of thing where he he plays some top lane, played Fiora, likes the champion, maybe played against it once against some mid Galios and in, in solo. How many mid Fiora games did he play? I would bet single digits. I I right. would bet like you're pushing ten at most a couple times in scrims. Who he on your screen there always has a crazy champion pool. Funnily enough, Fiora's kind of exactly the type of champion he should be playing because uh, he's thought of as more of an assassin player and a roamer and a, uh, than he is you know mm -hmm. this kind of lane dominant player. And Fiora probably not that lane dominant. He saw him even farming versus the Galios. So. Sure. Very surprising to see, and I mean, it, it worked out for this game. Yeah, it worked out, and I just, I love seeing things like that. I think we're not going to see another mid Fiora for a long time in pro play anywhere, but it certainly worked out really cool. Happy to see it. It's, it's definitely the kind of thing where every team wishes they were kind of like CLG, where they're like, look at all these crazy picks. I wish I wish we did that. And then you try it in your scrims, and you get absolutely bodied. Sure. It, it falls apart in, in five minutes, and you're like, why did we ever think we could do this? Because sometimes you can. So let's pull up some <laughs> of the replays on this one. Of course, we can start out with CLG getting a 2-0 in the bot lane, and... Some really good arrows, some roots into hooks, and it starts out pretty nice for CLG. Nice change to see. Uh, they have a teleport coming in from the ward deep in the lane. Six Day starts it off with the arrow. Uh, Aphromoo, knowing that he's already been CC, does not shoot the hook. Shows his understanding of Blitzcrank. Just run at them with your W on, knock off, and then grab the hook for damage instead. And then uh, Dardock has the inside track uh, falling around onto Biofrost, knocking him down. They get another kill here, and with these two kills, they're able to get the turret first. Uh, Sven was not really in a position to try and match the turret push. He gets up to the top side a little bit too slowly here. And despite the turret being at full health, uh, still he's able to grab first turret gold as well. We got four people around, not too bad for them. So that was a lot of the beginning of it. You saw some very good plays in the bot lane. The hooks were certainly on point. Afro playing it well and, and being patient. Double did do a pretty good job of dodging, but wasn't quite enough to be had. Our next replay, 16 minutes in the game, sealed. You get another team fight win, this time in the jungle, and we're going to watch this one roll out in a second. This is definitely one where you get to see the Puki understanding of the Fiora. It was probably not just some last minute decision, I would hope. Uh, it starts off well with Dardock and Darshan. Unfortunately, that wall does block the double knock in a little bit. It goes a little slower. Dardock also barely misses the Q snipe after getting a really nice flash reposition to get the double knock up kick. It makes this fight get pretty scrappy, and then from there, it's actually going to be on the side of, as we see, some small technical difficulties with yeah. the replay. Either way, at the very end, who he comes in late, gets a really close ultimate kill off to heal up and gets out with you know almost no health and gets two kills, which is kind of what we were saying, enables him to start matching that Kennen because usually Kennen is thought of as a counter to Fiora. 
Yep, uh, if you can get landing phase to happen, of course, which didn't here. Yeah, landing phase being the yep. biggest part of the count. Yep, just, just want to talk about that a little bit more. So uh, you can see how this game ended up rolling out right here. Big damage coming out of a lot of people on the team, and even the 17k out of Gragas, not too bad for magic damage. And mm -hmm. uh, Probably one of those things stuff. where there's not much magic resist, so Gragas gets to be like, yes, I'm much more effective right now. Thank you, guys. And uh, it was, it was you saw it, 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 was, it didn't come easy at all. Even though it was a fast game, relatively, they had to get into these kind of hectic split push situations to finally end the game. Not uh, at all what you expect out of traditional comps with sieging and 4-1 and stuff. Absolutely. He'll CLG continuing their undefeated streak so far. They have dropped games here and there, but they're looking to make it a 4-0 if they can close out against TSM. Player of the game honors go to Huhi for that mid for your work. I think there were certainly many players that had the option. Dardock, honorable mention, for having a, a deathless game for a while and having some good lease and stuff. The Blitzcrank is interesting as well, but the mid Fior was there to move the counter picks around. They see the Galio, they grab the Fior, they see the Cannon, they move the Fior instead, and, you know, it all works out nicely. The whole you know, comp kind of hinged on the Fiora pick getting going, and while it wasn't who he's individual play that got him going, he kind of needed his team to lift him up, but then once they got him there, he was able to close the game out. Yeah, so good stuff there. So now we're going to see if we can have a comeback from TSM or if CLG closes out the series. Don't touch that browser, at least leave it on uh, watch.lilysports.com. The match continues after this.